Hey guys, the footage you're about to see is done by a professional. I've been doing this for over 25 years. This footage is for entertainment value only. Please do not try this at home. So, you want to shoot fast, huh? <laughs> I'm finally waking up today. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, well, how do I get to the next level? Well. You get to the next level by being the first one on the range and the last one to leave. Hi guys, I'm Jerry Mitchellick and welcome to this episode of Shoot Fast. As you can see from in front of me here, this episode is going to be on 1911 pistols. If there's one pistol design that's been copied more than a 1911, I have no idea what it would be. This has to be the most copied and well-designed handgun ever manufactured so we're going to go kind of go through it i've got some different variations of it we'll talk about what makes it such a good platform and some of the differences of all all the guns you see here on the table they call it they call it the 1911 pistol because the u.s army adopted this platform back in 1911 so what they were looking for is a semi-automatic handgun that would fire under very adverse conditions and had a large caliber projectile so it's chambered in 45 ACP, which means automatic Colt pistol. So the way it came originally it had a seven round magazine, it had a total of eight round capacity, steel frame. Uh, show you some of the differences of the early production guns. This is similar to a World, a World War I era, 1911, that was manufactured toward the end of the war. Some of the things that they changed was the arched housing, you can still see the spur hammer here. This was some problems that uh, they eventually changed in all the competition guns. So he had a short grip tang here, relatively short trigger. It's a five inch gun, steel, well made, well designed. It had a locked breech, of course, and the sights were kind of small for what it was. Uh, back then, a handgun was considered more of a point and shoot, and that's something that you really aim. So it was a self defense. Uh, firearm more than it was a target gun. So the basic 1911 platform looked very similar to this. An interesting thing that went on in the Second War was a lot of the 1911s manufactured during the Second War. Because it was a wartime production item, a lot of the hardening processes were left out and the only thing actually hardened on a lot of the Second War guns, Second Era, Second World War II era guns was this little slide stop here on the, on the slide rest of the frame and the slide was basically dead soft. The service life of the gun was between four and 5,000 rounds, which seems relatively short to a gun enthusiast, but actually for a handgun to survive combat and rough use and had been fired four to 5,000 times, it was pretty non-existent for that to happen. So, and also the original 1911 was designed to where all the parts were 100% interchangeable. So if an armorer had 20 1911 pistols on the table, he just basically took them all down to every piece and part, threw it in a bucket, washed it, and should be able to assemble 20 1911 pistols without any fitting. So they had to be interchangeable. So what that meant to the, to the, to the actual firearm platform was they were relatively loose, loosely fitted. The triggers were relatively hard because the sears and the uh, hammers and the triggers all had to interchange in between one another. So they stacked the tolerances to where you could make them 100% interchangeable to where the armorer in the field could retrofit them with parts easily and keep them running. So that was one of the main concerns of a combat handgun was the reliability and the ability of the armorer to service it in the field. So, But to a gun enthusiast, we want to make them better. We want them to shoot easier. We want them to kick less. So some of the some of the evolution of the 1911 would be something that actually occurred here within the last 25, 30 years is the compensator. And really, my father-in-law Jim Clark of Clark Custom Guns was really the first one to put a barrel weight on a 1911 pistol. And the idea behind the barrel weight was it added lock time. To the slide assembly so it's a locked breech so when you put a weight on in the front the first ones were not ported so when this gun was to fire it slowed the cycle time of the slide and it gave the shooter the perception of a softer recoil and basically what it did it broke the recoil cycle down for a longer period of time so it made it a little bit easier to control rapid fire the first 
compensated or, or weighted guns were made to shoot bowling pins. Guys were shooting 45 rounds loaded with 250 grain bullets doing 950 feet a second. So had a lot of recoil there, so they added the weights in the front to keep the muzzle on target. Bowling pin is a relatively small target. The next evolution of that was to put ports in it. And the idea of the porting was to redirect the gas that would normally follow the projectile through the bore and redirect it up to keep the muzzle down. The blast effect would keep the muzzle plus the weight of the cone or the weight on the muzzle here kept it kept it easily on target. So that's the that's really the uh, the major improvement of the current race gun. So same trigger, same hammer, same sear. One thing that's very noticeable on the race guns, the current guns. They took the grip safety and actually raised it higher. And what they're trying to do here is to get the center line of the barrel down further in the center line of the hand. Uh, all, it, all that does is help control recoil. They also put bigger safety slide releases. What you have to remember about the 1911 platform, it's the same thing if you were a car enthusiast, if you had a 350 Chevrolet short block. 1911 is a 350 short block of the handguns. There's probably 10 million parts available <laughs> that you can retrofit and uh, interchange and modernize and uh, customize. Uh, it's a huge market for 1911 products for as customization goes. And it's all geared toward high performance. So this is pretty much a race gun in 9 mil. It's an STI frame. This is something within the last 25 years that evolved. And that is the high capacity 1911. Standard platform when it was issued back in 1911 with a seven round magazine in 45 ACP. The race guns like a 9 mil or 38 super now or 28, 29 round magazine. So you could actually tweak this magazine and get 29 rounds in it. So a lot of firepower, same basic John Browning pattern. Just a great design overall, easily customized to suit the, the needs of the user. So let's go on and look at some Smith & Wesson products. This is my early, this is an early Smith & Wesson standard production 1911. What you might notice on this handgun here is the external extractor. This is something John Browning included in the Browning High Power of 1935. The external extractor is easy to, easier to manufacture and it's also easier to tune. So they found out after the 1911s were in production that the external extractor is actually a product upgrade. So Smith & Wesson took it into their, into their uh, production technique and started making 1911s. This is a stainless steel version of it. I've had it since they first started making 1911s. It's one of my demo guns that I shoot in demos and I've shot a few competitions with it has a magwell on it. Uh, I put a trigger job on it. Other than that, I didn't throw it the barrel or the frame or do anything to it except put a match trigger and match grade hammer in it. So it's been a great gun. It's really fast. This is another Smith & Wesson gun. This is a performance center. Also an external extractor. What they did on these particular guns, and that's something I said earlier about the standard 1911 product. It had to be 100% interchangeable in between all the guns. These guns are a custom item. The frame is hand fitted to the slide. There's minimum tolerance there, just enough tolerance to, for it to work. Also the barrel is fitted to that individual frame and slide. That gives it a match grade accuracy. The front bushing is also fitted. You need a wrench to disassemble it. Whereas the standard guns were made to where the soldier could easily field strip it. So if you made the front bushing for a wrench, of course, a guy in the field is not going to have a bushing wrench. So 100% interchangeability, 100% custom fit. The way they actually make these guns is that the slides are machined and then the hand, they actually hand fit. The, the frames are all machined and then the slides are hand fitted to the frame. So you have just about 100% contact and the accuracy potential. And the life of the accuracy potential of this handgun is greatly enhanced because everything is square and you have a bearing surface the whole length of the frame here. So it's really a good high quality match grade 1911. One fitted up like this with the right ammunition should easily shoot two and a half inches at 50 yards. So you pay for a lot of hand fitting and you get it on the target. So it's a, it's a great pistol. Here we have another high capacity 1911. It's a six inch slide. 
just give you some ideas of what's available on this platform. A six inch barrel. This is a nine mil. It's a Cameron Arms custom gun from high capacity tricked out. Probably about a pound and three quarter trigger pull. And that's another feature of the 1911 which makes it so easily adaptable for target shooting is the way the trigger is designed in a hammer and a sear with the right pieces and parts. I've seen trigger jobs uh, go down to 13 ounces that were 100% safe to use. So these guns as they came stock to a soldier were probably in the 7-8 pound range. That gives you an idea of what total interchangeability versus custom parts are. So that's what makes this platform so easily adaptable to competition is the straight single action trigger guys. It's uh, what can I say the best there is. This is another Smith & Wesson. This is their 1911 9mm Pro Series. I brought this along to show you that you know 1911s come in a lot of different calibers. Uh, this is a 9mm. This gun easily will shoot 3 inches at 50 yards. It's, an, it's another hand fitted custom Smith & Wesson out of the box. So. And as we look at the evolution here of the 1911, this is the current Smith & Wesson E-Series. And I'm going to show you some features on the E-Series that you might not have seen on, on other 1911s. One thing they did, they put an external extractor on it also. It's also a little wider than the first generation Smith & Wesson. But they also tuned the ejection port. And that's, that's something that's uh, very different from the early issue combat grade 1911s. You know that the ejection, you can see that the ejection port here is lowered. It's actually flared in the front and it's tapered on the inside. So what they're trying to do here, they used a lot of high speed photography, where the, where the location of the extractor, the angle, the, the, how much tension, and how, the, and how the brass actually left the slide it had a lot to do with, with the, uh, the actual design and the finish of the slide here on the ejection port. So it's not just a bunch of guys playing around with a Dremel tool. This is actually a, a very seriously engineered 1911. And you can also see it has an accessory rail here for tactical lights, your lasers or what have you, checkering and extended grip safety here. Uh, another feature that's getting real popular, you, don't, you can miss your grip and still have the uh, ability to depress the safety. So that's, an, that's a product upgrade. Night sights, ambidextrous safeties, just about all the bells and whistles that you could expect to find on a custom 1911 is right there on that package. Okay, we got all the firearms off the table. We're going to do a quick overview on some 1911 ammunition types. Uh, we'll start with the original 1911 caliber, which is 45 ACP. What I have here is a box of ball rounds from 1917. It's actually specified that it's loaded with 5 grains of bullseye with a velocity of plus or minus 25 feet a second and an average of 800 feet a second. So. These cartridges were made by the Peters Cartridge Company in King Mills, Ohio. So the head stamp is 1917. What you'll notice here, it's a full metal jacket. It's a silver looking bullet, which means it's a cupro nickel jacket. Uh, that was pretty common back in the First War. They used it on that 30 caliber, uh, 30 out 6 ammo, and also on the pistol rounds. This one has a large primer. Another interesting aspect of the 1911s were actually the first generation cartridges had a small primer and they went over to a large primer. I think that was because there was so much variations in the 1911 pistol that the firing pin wouldn't actually hit the center of a small primer enough so they went to a larger one. You also notice as it has a cantilever here and the way they have this brass crept on the back of the bullet is to keep it from setting back into the case during the feeding cycle. So this is a 1917 production 230 grain ACP ball round. Pretty interesting piece right there. Moving on up through the progression of the bullet design, there's another 45 round. It's a solid copper round, probably about 165 grains. What they try to do here on a design like this, being that it's solid copper, no matter what medium it hits, it's pretty much going to retain its weight. Uh, the velocity on this is probably about 1100 feet a second, so that's a solid copper design with a, with a traditional hollow point. So, Moving on through, this is a Winchester round. It's a 230 grain hollow point. Pretty much looks similar in design to the solid copper projectile. Not all in all a bad design. Moving on to a gold dot. This is a plated lead projectile and it has a segmented core, I mean a segmented nose. 
He basically plate a piece of lead and then punch it out into a hollow point. The good thing about this design is that the brass, I'm sorry, the copper itself is actually bonded, it's plated to the lead, so separation rates are very minimal on this design. It's a good design. It, has, it meets most of the FBI protocol uh, for cartridge bullet integrity, so not a bad design. Remington round, another 230 grain. This is a golden saber. This particular round has a pre a pre scored brass jacket with a lead with a lead uh, core. The way the the jacket is made, uh, it pretty much starts to open up when it hits. So it's a, it, it's a pretty predictable round. It's a good it's a good uh, good all around cartridge. This is the Winchester Black Talon or their SS STS round. Uh, it's pretty famous in its ability to uh, perform well. Matter of fact, it worked so good they took them off the market and made them strictly a law enforcement round. So that's the Winchester Black Talon. Going on to the latest generation of cartridges. And what you see here, this is a Hornady round. This is 185 grain. This is the Flex Tip uh, 45 round. And with the technology that you see here with the uh, polymer actually in the nose of the projectile, it lets it function through a wide range of barrier types. Uh, doesn't need much fluid at all to get the expansion going. It's, it's pretty repeatable. It's not easily clogged by clothing or drywall or glass. So what you're looking at here is the, basically the, the evolution of the projectile for a handgun that makes it very consistent in a broad range of velocities and also impact uh, resistance for its barriers and clothing and uh, it will perform consistently. So that's probably the most advanced bullet on the market. And here's another projectile. This is the uh, Federal Guard Dog, which is basically a full metal jacket expanding round. So it needs less hydraulic effect to get going. Interesting thing about the 45, just give you an idea of how many different calibers that I can just jot down out of memory. Uh, I'll give you a quick run through. 45 Super, 460 Roland, of course the 45 ACP, 400 Corbon. 40 Smith & Wesson, 10 millimeter, 357 SIG, 38 ACP, 38 Super, 9 by 25 Dillon, 9 by 19, 9 by 21, 9 by 23, 41 Action Express, 38 45, 22 Centerfire. There was one that they were necking down. I think they were taking a 10 millimeter round and necking it down to 22, so that'd be a 22. A 22 Long Rifle, of course, 38 Special, and also 30 Tokarov. So. That's a, lo a long list of cartridges that will function in basically the same platform. That gives you an idea of just how flexible the John Browning design is. So, so there you have it. A small, short introduction to the 1911, guys. This thing has just uh, been around for over 100 years. This, these few minutes that I covered with you is just a brief introduction. The only thing more fun than talking about them is actually shooting them. So. And the way we, we keep score on what we do here is with a professional grade timer. These things can go down to a hundredth of a second. You can set part times on them. They'll, you can review everything you do and it's accurate down to a hundredth of a second. So if you're an aspiring shooter or you're a professional, this is something you have to have in your kit. So we've got our timer. We've got, our, we've got a bag of good guns here. We've got a lot of ammunition. So we're going to get ready to head out to the range. and Let's, let's, let's make them run. Hey, we finally made it out to the range. I've got my Smith & Wesson 1911. It's pretty much stock except for a trigger job uh, and a magwell. So this is one of their early production guns. The way I see myself as a competitor is, I like to see how many pieces of brass I can get in the air at one time. So I've got a 1911. I've got six rounds in a magazine. So what I'm gonna try to do is get that first piece of brass out and get the last one going before the first one can hit the ground. So we're looking at six pieces of brass in the air at one time. So what you want to remember when you're on the range, guys, finger out a trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. Point toward the target before you charge it. Drop the slide, pointing down range into a berm. Should something happen, you'll shoot into the berm and not into the sky. So it's very important if you're a range owner or if you're an enthusiast to keep it safe. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and shoot this thing six times. Let's go ahead and shoot the target in the middle. See if we can get six brass in the air at one time. Here we go. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> I 
guys, that wasn't a bad run right there. Let's go back and review uh, the string of fire. I'm talking split times, and that's in hundreds of a second per shot. So the first shot was actually when I started the timer, it was a .76, and then we had a 14, a 12, a 12, 11, and then another 11. So the total time, 76 from 142 is about .66 hundredths of a second from the first to the last shot. So that's not really a bad run cold. There again, single action trigger on the 1911s make them very shootable. So but I think I might be able to do a little bit better. So we're gonna, we're gonna try another run. Okay, we're gonna try six rounds again, see if we can go a little bit faster. That first run's gonna be hard to beat. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't bad at all. Let's take a look. Whew. 16, 12, 13, 13, 12. A 132 total, a 66 first shot. Six, uh, that's running about the same time right there. I'm gonna go back through my math again. I think I actually screwed up here. 66 first shot, and the total time was a 132. So actually, that's exactly 66 hundredths again. So that was two runs, six rounds on target, 0 0.66 hundredths from the first to the last shot, cold. Uh, Maybe the sun is shining for a reason. That's pretty good. 1911 single action trigger, guys. Can't beat it. Okay, guys, I have that same pistol. I'm going to try to make it run a little bit faster, but I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. I'm going to have to use both hands. So I'm going to step up to the line. I've got some 10 round magazines, and I have a timer here. This pack timer picks up in a mode called RPM, which is rounds per minute. I can go back and, re and review it, and you can compare it to what a fully automatic machine gun might sound like. So. We got 10 round magazines, 1911 pistol. Let's go take a run at it. We'll shoot the target in the middle. All right. Target in the middle. Here we go. Well, we had seven on target. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and review that right quick. That was actually 602 rounds per minute out of a 1911 pistol. But that was only seven. That was seven rounds. Let me see if I can put ten on target. It's not a bad group though. Let's go ahead and see if we can put ten. Let's see what the RPM mode says. I got really excited and started looking at the target. Once you look at the target, you pretty much told. a seven shot wonder <laughs> that was exactly seven shots again let's go ahead and review it that was uh, must be lucky today because that was 604 rounds again for that performance so we seem to be stuck right at that mode but I can go back and look at the shot splits we're actually running the actual time in between shots was averaging about 0 0.09, 0 0.093, 0 0.097. So we're running, we're running pretty quick. Okay, guys, I seem to be about a seven shot wonder here today. I'm gonna try to make all 10 rounds on target. We're doing about a 602 rounds per minute right now. I wanna see if I can do a little bit better than that. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can get 10 on target. No, no. That one didn't make it. Let's try one more. One more. Here we go. On the clock. <laughs> I think I made a few more rounds that time. Let's see what we did there. No. Nope. Six rounds. 609. I'm staying right around 609 rounds per minute so that's about where I'm at today guys target in the middle here we go I'm gonna try something a little bit different I've got two 1911 pistols I've got 10 round mags in them so I'm gonna try to put 20 shots on target 1911 left hand 1911 in right hand and uh, see what that looks like see if we can get 20 rounds on target here it should be uh, Pretty interesting scenario. Here we go. <laughs> wow, 
what a good way to waste ammo. Alright, let's take a look at it. That was actually 20 rounds downrange. First shot of the 38. And the last shot was a 184. So, hmm, not bad. Let's count them on target. We got to try that again. Just going back through that previous run, the total time was 1.46 hundredths of a second from the first to the last shot. So that was 20 rounds downrange and a little under a second and a half from the first to the last shot. They sounded pretty good, so the trigger pulls were good. I got a little bit on the left side of the target. So I'm going to try to dress that up a little bit. Go ahead and get these, these guns topped off and uh, see what we can do here. Here we go. I think that time we nailed every one of them there, so might have been a half slower. I don't know what it is today, guys, but uh, the timer doesn't lie. That was a 146 also for 20 rounds downrange on target, so that's about where I'm at. It's not bad for cold, so I'm going to take that and we're going to move on to something more exciting. I know what you're thinking. If 10 rounds is good, 27 has to be better. And that's one thing about the 1911 platform. There's a thousand variations of it. This is a 9 mil high capacity, 27 rounds. I'm going to see if I can get them all one continuous string of fire and see how long it takes or how short it takes to get these rounds on target. So here we go, guys. Here we go. That's almost like a job right there. <laughs> I saw, that was about $60 worth of ammo. I don't know if you noticed it, but... Uh, <laughs> so actually, guys, there it is. That was actually 27 rounds on target. The total time was a 3 point, 7100 of a second. And if you break that down, if you divide it by 26, is really what you're counting is 26 rounds. At average, 1400 sec, 1400 of a second per shot for... 26 rounds on target so guys that's uh i give you an idea of some of the different variations of the 1911 but we're going to do some multiple target stuff and uh, we're going to race this same gun okay what i'm going to do next is pick a split time that i know i can do some transitions on so this is a transition segment so i'm going to start on the target in the middle so what i want you to do is just listen for my rate of fire, and I'm gonna shoot that target in the middle six times. So here we go. Target in the middle, six shots. Just just pay attention to the splits here. Here we go. Okay, let's go back and review that right quick. We had a 14, a 15, a 15, a 16. So we're running about a 16, 1700 splits. So you say, what's the big deal? The big deal is now we're gonna make it a lot harder. I'm going to shoot the target on the left twice, the target in the middle, and the target on the right, and I'm going to shoot the same split, 17, 1600s across the board. So it should sound like I'm firing on one target. Here we go. Two on the left, two on the middle, two on the right. I know what you're thinking. That's, that's way too easy. So we're going to make it a little harder. We're going to run the same splits. Target on the left, go to the target on the right, come back to the target on the left. I've got twice the distance. And I'm going to try to run it in the same time. Here we go. Well, did he get lucky or what? <laughs> and that's transition shooting. Okay, guys. Got that 9mm again. High capacity magazine. We have a plate rack. We're going to see how fast we can run them. So let's go ahead off the timer here. Shoot this rack a couple of times. See what it looks like. Oh, that's what you call looking over the gun. I had a good rack going. I picked my head up. Perfect way to lose a match is to look at what you're doing. So instead of paying attention, let's go ahead and do it again. Keep your head down. And that's the difference between keeping your head down and looking over. So not a bad performance. 
Let's take a look at the total time. 193 and an 87. So we were running about 21 splits. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go over something with you right here. That was a 21, a 21, a 21, a 22, and a 21. So I went right to a split that I knew I could hit a target at that happened to be a 21. And I was able to keep those trigger poles in cycle and had a good rack. So good day on the range, guys. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish up. I've got some cans of corn. I've got some shave cream. I've got my trusty nine mil. Got some good ammunition here. Let's just go ahead and run them left to right and see what that looks like. Left to right, here we go. <laughs> As you can see guys, that's just a lot of fun. So a lot of flexibility in the 1911s, a lot of fun. All right, here we go. You know, this is for all you guys that think a 9mm is not too effective. Uh, that's nothing I want to catch downrange, guys. That's just give you a small demonstration of what's available. Anyway, there it is, guys. Fun day on the range. So what do you think, guys? The old man can shoot a pistol. If you can shoot a revolver, you can easily shoot a pistol. That gives you some idea of just how shootable a 1911 platform is. Even someone who doesn't train with it regularly can have a good performance. Uh, so there you have it, one of the most copied handguns in the world. Also, what I'd like for you to do is subscribe to Michelec.com. The next episode is going to be on the FNFAL, which is a full caliber battle rifle. It should be a very exciting episode.